Hey guys, what's going on? Andrew coming at you. Uh, I'm excited for this next one. I'm gonna be talking about the differences between uh, Swedish police and American police. Uh, before I even begin, I think being a police officer has to be one of the most difficult jobs because they have to deal with people being disrespectful to them. Maybe most people aren't happy to see them. And you gotta be brave on top of all that. So for all the brave men and women out there that do serve, whether you're in the United States or Sweden, I do wanna thank you starting off. I'm going to have to talk about some things and be critical of some things, but I just want to point out overall, I think that most police do a fantastic job. Uh, the, all that out of the way though, let's go into it. We're going to first start with the differences. Uh, so the main differences I see starting out is that uh, in America you have so many different types of police forces and in Sweden you just have the Swedish police. Now I'm sure there's different police stations, you could work at different Swedish places, but it's not like there's a Linköping city or Stockholm city police like on the vehicle you know everything is kind of together there's there's a chief at, in different cities and stuff like that but it seems to be a lot more con like centralized i guess and controlled and everybody's doing things i believe mostly the same way whereas like in the united states system just to give example i'd have a cop in my town where i'm from Kansasburg. we had city cops pittsburgh you had state cops which were the pennsylvania state cops so you have all these cops that are getting tax money from different types of places that have many different people making decisions on what they're kind of things they're going to buy and things like that, uh, what kind of weapons or equipment they're going to have. Uh, and then on top of that in the United States, you also have like federal police. So you got the FBI and you have like the DEA. So you have cops that have jurisdiction without the with, within the whole United States. So it's a lot more kind of I guess complicated of a system as far as policemen and who's in charge and things like that than it is in uh, Sweden. It seems to be a lot more just put together in that sense. Another fundamental difference I noticed, and I've been in Sweden for six years, so it, it, it could change in the United States, but there's a lot more female police officers in Sweden. It, it's a lot more mixed, which I think is a, is a positive thing. And that means that every police officer in Sweden is huge at least i think so like they all look like everybody i've ever met that's like a swedish police officer it looks like somebody you don't want to mess with uh it seems to be very prestigious to become a police officer it's very very difficult to do uh they have to be in great shape and things like that uh and on top of that it's 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 very very well respected I think it's the same in like the United States in a sense, but you know, I've seen a lot of cops that are kind of out of shape, but there, there isn't as much uh, police, female police officers that I've seen in the United States. I think it's getting better, but, but not as much. I, I think that it's hard to be a police officer in the United States and I think it's grueling. Unfortunately, I don't think that the, uh, the police in the United States have as good of a reputation uh, as Swedish police officers overall. And uh, that, that's another difference that we have. That being said, I think one fun reason why is because I believe that Swedish police officers do a much better job at de-escalating a situation and not bringing it to a dangerous level. As you can see, the Swedish police are in the United States and they have no problems taking a non-lethal means to uh, safely subdue somebody uh, and not escalate it any further, staying calm, uh, not, not reacting. Uh, and I, I, I think sometimes in the American system, you'll, you, cops aren't as well trained. Put your hands up now! Veteran officers Ken LaRude and Gordy Bush are responding to a burglary. It's all part of a de-escalation drill designed to help cops figure out an alternative to deadly force. Uh, why didn't you tase him? He's not trying to harm anybody. He's just trying to trying to get away. Perfect. Uh, we use appropriate level four. Uh, not all cops, but it, it, again, it could go back to the whole not being central thing. But uh, they, American police don't always do the best job of de-escalating a situation. I've seen many types of situations where someone's clearly uh, mentally not well or arguing with the cop and you think back and say, it's easy to be an armchair quarterback, by the way. It's very easy for me to sit here and I understand that because my life's not on the line. I think that's important to say. But you can kind of look at some issues and say, wow, they, they didn't need to take it to that level. Uh, they, they could have maybe backed off a little bit. So that's another fundamental difference that I've seen. Uh, this is a huge fundamental difference. Like, I got pulled over once in the States uh, because I was going too fast and it was totally by accident. It's like, 
and I was going maybe 10 miles over this, 15 miles over the speed limit or something like that, I guess 20, 22 kilometers, something around there. And when the cop pulled me over, I went, oh, I pulled off to the road and like I did everything right, had my insurance and everything, was very respectful to the cop. And it, it, I was like, oh, I made a mistake. I'm really sorry. It's the truth. And uh, the cop gave me a warning. He didn't give me a ticket where I had to pay money, which was awesome because I was a broke college student at the time. And that's the difference in Sweden. Like uh, they, they like will do the checks. They do these checks for speed checks once a year. They don't even pull you over to like one person's got like the gun. They like flag you off and they just give you a ticket. There's no talking to, as far as I know, there's no talking to like a police officer and they're going to like just give you a warning and stuff like that. It's very black and white here in Sweden. You broke the law, boom, here's your ticket or here's your consequence. Where in the American system, it seems like you can kind of talk to police officers. That can go good or bad as we've seen in videos, but like cops can also very nicely give you a warning or or give you a ticket, especially if they don't think that you can afford the ticket or things like that, if you're polite. So a lot of times, interactions police, if it's positive both ways uh, in the United States, it can find a solution. Unfortunately, as we've seen in a lot of videos, if, if people are negative to each other, it can go another way. I also think that Swedish police do a better job of non-lethal means. Uh, in the United States, we use the taser a lot. I don't see, think, see the taser used so much uh, in Sweden. Uh, but in the, in the United States, I mean, sometimes I think the taser can be overly used. Uh, when there's other means of non-lethal takedowns as well that are used. So it, it fundamentally comes down to this, guys, and I don't think people like hearing this. I think part of the reason that we don't, we're not so good with non-lethal takedowns and the cops aren't trained that way is in the United States, everybody can potentially have a gun. And just the, w the way our society is built by having guns, the elephant in the room is every time a policeman is interacting with someone during a pullover, that person could have a gun ready to shoot them. And you don't have that same kind of danger if you're a policeman in Sweden. It, it exists, people have guns and stuff, but it's much more rare. And I don't think we can deny the fact that cops are gonna feel that way when they're interacting with people just simply because there's more guns. It's, it's, it's a real possibility that we have to accept. So that's one thing I gotta say, because policemen do make mistakes in the United States and we, we can sit back and judge it, but we have to remember that, that uh, Someone's reaching in their bag. I've seen it. And if someone's reaching their bag for their wallet, then they get shot. Uh, it's horrible. It should not happen. But uh, I think it's a consequence of us allowing people to have firearms, especially concealed weapons. Another thing I want to mention is my experience, because I think this is important as well. So, and when I was in college, I went to Indiana University of Pennsylvania. I'm driving a car, having a good old time. And... Uh, I got pulled over the week before for like a tail light on my car. I just had an old car, so I didn't realize it was out. So it wasn't like a ticket. I just got a warning that my light was out. I had no idea. So I got pulled over again by this cop and everybody in the town knew who this cop was. I'm not going to say his name, but, uh, he pulled me over. Uh, I was not breaking the law. I actually found out later that he pulled me over illegally. Uh, the reason he said he pulled me over was a lie. Uh, and Pulled me over, got me out of the vehicle. That was kind of scary because once I was out of the car, I'm like, why am I out of the car? He uh, was very rude and mean to me, uh, lied about why he pulled me over, uh, wanted to search my vehicle, and uh, when I refused to let him search my vehicle, because in the United States, you don't have to allow people to search your car. You can just say, and that's the thing. I didn't trust this guy. I don't want this guy in my car or doing anything. Uh, I heard so many stories about this guy. But anyways, uh, when I refused to do that, he lied and said he smelled alcohol in my breath, which was not true. And then he breathalyzed me. And of course I passed the breathalyzer test. Uh, another police officer came up and I'm looking at this guy and I'm a college kid. I was on my way to learn how to play the saxophone because I'm studying to be a music teacher at, in, at university. And I'm looking at this guy who's maybe 24, 25 at the time, trying to ruin my life simply because I knew the law simply because I knew my rights as a citizen. I was just like, no, no, you can't do that. No, am I free to leave? Like, I wasn't being rude or mean. I was just simply like knowing my rights in the constitution and like doing everything by the book and not letting him bully me just because that's what he was. He was a bully. I was, you know, standing up for myself but not being mean. And I'm watching this guy try to ruin your life and realizing that he had done it. How many people had he already done this to? And I, I heard stories about this guy. Well. Uh, luckily, the cop did get busted later on, uh, a couple years later, for doing a lot of illegal stuff and some shady stuff, so, you know, karma wins in the end, but 
uh, for a long time, about a year or two, until I had that other interaction where that I told you the cop gave me the, t he gave me the no ticket, it was a really nice interaction. I had an irrational like fear of the police because it was such a traumatic experience that like, I had some trouble with like panic attacks a couple weeks later, uh, like when I would see a cop and, and I was so afraid to interact with cop. This guy gave me such a negative view of the police and um, I think we have to, that's why I think the problem is uh, when a police officer does something wrong, uh, the problem has been in the United States that, and before, like we protect this person because we protect the police, but you shouldn't do that because we need to get people like that out of the police force and uh, because then it brings the trust back. So uh, unfortunately I had that bad incident, but like I overall think police are fantastic and I have great interactions with the police and I say hi to the police when I see them, but uh, those few bad apples that we have in the United States, because think about it like, you know, I'm supposed to be, you know, privileged or whatever. I'm supposed to be, you know, I'm a, I'm a 20, well, I'm a 32 year old white male in the United States. So, you know, and I had that reaction in college. So, you know, what do other people go through? It makes me think about it. So, and if I was a police officer and I'm a great police officer, I would be mad at these people that do that, that make it a bad name for everyone else. So, <sighs> I'm like exhausted now, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, I would love to have you subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey do!